Hello and welcome all into the MO podcast. As always, you're here with me, Consumatious Ant. And me, Atreya. And this week, because last week was a little bit heavy, we've I've decided to go a little bit lighter with it <laughs> this week. Uh, although three people do disappear, so maybe it's not that light. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Flannan Isles lighthouse disappearance. Ooh, I like this one. Oh, probably not the way I've done it, I'll be oh. honest with you. Uh, wow. Copy and paste, in it. Uh, wow, there's a solid point. I'm <laughs> <laughs> not going to like this episode. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, Ant. Uh, uh, well, no. I mean, I thought it was quite apt, considering uh, Mother Contumacious is there at the minute. She, she's she's actually not on the Flannan Isles, but she's on... <laughs> Managing uh, the lighthouse. <laughs> yeah. She's on Lewis. She's on holiday in Lewis at the minute, which is the nearest populous to the Flannan Isles, 20 miles away from, uh, and it's part of that Outer Hebrides. So if you don't know where the Flannan Isles is, it's 208 miles northwest of Glasgow, up in them there hills. Can you not ask her to just nip across to the Flannan Isles and like send us a like a live feed? Like, hello, I'm, I'm Mother Contumacious and I'm here live from the Flannan Isles. Let's do a, a, a live Q&A. Can we not? Can we not get her on the phone? Right. I'm not going to lie. Right. I did. I, I had this idea last week, but I've had Lurgy for the <laughs> past four kidding. days. No, I've had Lurgy for the past four days, so I've not done anything. So I was writing the notes up this morning and I actually went, shit, it's near Lewis. And I picked up my phone, ready to text my mum, just to like ask her to look out the window to see if she can see it or something. Don't know why. Don't know why I thought that. <laughs> thought that she'd go, yeah, what, 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 why? Uh, but I didn't. What but... would you have done if she'd have been like, e- yes, yeah, no, I can see it. Is that, no, that's all I needed to know. Thanks, mum. Bye. Yeah, good. It's still there. I've got confirmation. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, it, I did pick up my phone and look at it and go, I could just text me. And then I thought, what the fuck am I doing? Why? What What would I text her? <laughs> See, you already, it's subliminal. You want her involved in this show. You know it. I want her. You want her. Let's just oh, get her God. on the fucking show. Oh, God, no. Ugh, don't don't make me mum internet famous. That's I'm, not I'm happening. I'm going to. Uh, it's not happening. Right. It might make us internet famous. Well, yeah, I'd be grabbing onto them coattails, I tell you. <laughs> She's kicking and screaming. Uh, I don't mind bringing your mum's lattes, cappuccinos, <laughs> whatever she wants. I don't really don't mind. I'm good with that. Get uh, yeah, you say that, but then the other week she did ask me when I'll go up if I can uh, show her how to subscribe to YouTube channels. So. Well, then you should be using our channel as an example. <laughs> This yeah, mum is how you yeah. subscribe. You yeah. get the subscribe button. And then she was like, if I subscribe, is there any cost? Just where, where does the money come out? I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, mum, fine. She's trying to learn. Leave her be. She is, she is. Uh, anyway, right, I'm not going to talk that much about it because she probably won't want to come on if she ever hears this. Uh, <laughs> So, anyway, back to the Outer Hebrides, which is a hellish landscape at the best of time. Why? Just cold and windy. Back in them days, right, the ferry took seven hours from uh, Oban to get to Stormway. And it was, it's just open. There's no, there's no hills. So it's just flat. So the wind just blows everything and anything. It's like... Oh, it's what I imagine hell would be like. Uh, they had they had one Hell's co-op. Hell's just a bit windy. Yeah, they had one, one co-op. co-op. Yeah, and it was a co-op as well. Uh, not even a spa. I mean, uh, prefer a co-op personally, but okay. It was. Uh, I was staying with Lord of Jehovah's Witnesses, who oh, who thought the cure the cure. Bad feet because I had I had uh, eczema on my feet, and he thought the cure for that was tuna bulba garlic. <laughs> Garlic's good for you though. They might have been right. How does chewing a bulb of garlic help your feet? Well, I mean, I don't have know. You, and 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 have you ever chewed a bulb of garlic? I haven't actually. Well, I do like go. garlic. 
Mm. Not not a full bulb when you bite into it. You just go, it's like doing a COVID test all over again. Ah, ah, <laughs> dry even. Actually, you know what? It is good for your feet. I've just Googled it. <laughs> Although not chewing it, you're supposed to put it Probably on, rub your, it in. on yeah. your feet, yeah. <laughs> Which, which, even at the age of whatever I was, I probably probably put my hand up and went, is this the right place it should be going? Because it shouldn't be going in my mouth. <laughs> I mean, I've said that a lot of times to a lot of people, but, you know. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, right. I think yeah, I'm sorry. venting a little bit too much here about it's okay. my life. I keep life. doing a tangent alert. It's okay, it's fine. It's me. Yeah, right, we'll take that, blaming you. Yeah, I keep starting, it's fine. Sorry, do continue. So, yes, the Flannan Isles, <laughs> and uh, that lovely place called the Outer Hebrides. Uh, it's very lovely if you're listening. Uh, uh. <laughs> so, basically, it it's just a collection of islands which, historically, shepherds grazed their sheep there because they believed the grass was magical. Now, this is a quote. According to tra- tradition, grazing on the flannans was exemplary. Ewes would have twin lambs, and even sickly sheep would benefit from a spell spent on the islands. So, some they got kind good of. Grass. Yeah, basically. But then, the six That's islands. What they say about your ass. <laughs> well. <laughs> Did you spit your drink out? I wish. No. <laughs> All right, okay. No. <laughs> I Sorry. wish, anyway. Continue. Uh, so the six islands, and just to give you the kind of size of these islands, the the sheep that were actually distributed there, they could only have a certain number on them to sustain them. So the biggest on Elon Moor could only sustain 24 to 30 sheep. So it, they're kind of like field sizes. They're not massively big. And uh, the lighthouse was built on Elon Moor, which was the largest of the islands, in 1899. And they always had a four-man crew. Three were always at the lighthouse, and they were always on duty. And there was one on the mainland uh, to rotate in in case of sickness or injury. Now, the three on the island were James Ducat, Thomas Marshall, and William MacArthur. Joseph Moore was the fourth lighthouse man in December of 1900 when the disappearances occurred. Now, Joseph Moore was taking over. He was going to relieve one of the lighthouse men. Now, I couldn't find any actual records of who it was, but I would assume it was Donald MacArthur as he was an occasional keeper. He wasn't actually used to uh, being on the island away from his family for long periods of time. And he was actually only there because one of the other lighthouse men was sick. So he'd he'd already kind of gone over his time. So he was a little bit Maybe Ansi. I don't. I don't know. Uh, so he was a substitute trainee lightkeeper. Yeah. Okay. So he wasn't. He wasn't he, like he was part time lightkeeper. He just. Yeah. He just. He just did it when his sheep were there. Probably. I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> dropped his sheep off, and he went, "Oh, I'll do a stint or whatever." But uh, he wasn't used to spending as much time on the island as the other guys who were like full time guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Joseph Moore pulled up on with the, on the ship the Hesperus, and as he approached the lighthouse, uh, Captain Harvey, who was the captain of the Hesperus, he he didn't see any signs of light life. the The flag on the lighthouse wasn't up as it usually would be. There was uh, no response when he blast made several horn blasts, and apparently he even fired a rocket off the ship now i don't know if it was uh, yeah i don't know if it was an excess missile or if it was like a fucking like a firework <laughs> yeah or something but it he actually put in his report i fired a rocket off the ship and they didn't they didn't pay any attention so they still get their attention yeah 
Check that RPG out. <laughs> right, here we go. Ignore me, will you? Thank you, yeah. Uh, Smooth. <laughs> so, it was already a little bit eerie, and uh, they decided to lower a boat and let Joseph Moore go on his own for some reason, even though they're all like, oh, that's a bit odd, isn't it? Right, off you go, off you go, son. Uh, we'll wait here for you. Uh, so, Moore landed at the East Landing. Important edit. Although I did say Moore landed on the east side of the island, that is a lie. He actually landed on the west side of the island. And he couldn't see anything wrong, and he set off up the 160 steep steps. Now, the only reason I've, I've included that is someone thought it was very important to put 160 steep steps in their notes, so I've just thought, you know what, I'll copy that. <laughs> Uh, Did he disappear as well? Because the chances are he got to the top and went, oh, fucking I'm fucking knackered, and then just fell into the sea. Yeah, I had a heart attack and fucking rolled all the way back down yeah. and just kept going. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, to be honest with you, this this could explain explain the disappearance of them because it's a fucking long way up, <laughs> so then it's a long way down, isn't it, really? I mean, uh, so Joseph Moore investigated the uh, the actual lighthouse as he opened the living quarters area it was kind of a Mary Celeste situation there was a a chair had been knocked over there was a table set for a meal that was was obviously never been eaten the large clock on the kitchen wall had stopped and there was uh, an oilskin coat just one of the oilskin coats left on the hook and it, it hadn't been touched. This later proved to be uh, MacArthur's, who was the, the, the part-time keeper. Now, this was written up in his report. The superintendent who went out there, who was Robert Muirhead, did actually put this in his the official report. But there is a little bit of artistic license been taken here over the years, I think. I mean... The clocks back then, they did need to be wound up every few days to keep going. So they, they didn't have batteries. It's 1900s. They weren't solar powered or, or have batteries or anything like that. So you had to have a big key and wind it up to keep it going. So that, yeah, the clock would have stopped if people hadn't been there for a long time. The, the chair knocked over... Is that artistic license or is there genuinely just one chair that's been knocked over? And but but then again, there was no instances, there was no evidence of a fight. So what's the chair? How's the chair been knocked over? Kind of thing, if you know what I mean. I mean, it also depends if it's a light chair or a heavy one. I would struggle knocking over one of my dining room chairs, but like the garden chair outside, you just have to like whisper past it, and that's it. It's on the fucking. It's on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, so, uh, I think a bit of artistic license over the years has been taken with some of mm -hmm. these things. It's just something to kind of bear in mind with it. Uh, but Moore went back to the captain and he reported what he'd seen it, it, at the lighthouse and what had happened or, or what he assumed had, ha had happened. And the captain sent three men back with Moore to man the lighthouse, get the light on and just to, just to do some further investigation. So they went back to the lighthouse and uh, got everything up and running. There was no damage in where the light was there. All the ropes were there. Everything was fine and dandy. And then they went to have a little bit of a nosy about and just to see if they could find anything. Now, over on the East Landing, there was clearly damaged they, they, there was a supply box that was stored 100 feet above the actual sea level and that had been destroyed, it contained mooring gear ropes and they'd gone uh, there was iron railings on the side of a path and they'd been bent and twisted out of shape and part, I don't get this bit but this is what it says part of a railway track had been torn from its concrete moorings and a huge rock and a huge rock weighing more than a ton had been displaced. Oh. 
I kind of get the huge rock loop? bit, but I don't understand. Yeah. Oh, is it? Does it not like you know, you know, like a, like a track for like a cart, you know, like for ship, for like moving things up and down the island. You know, like they use like in the mine carts. Is yeah, it? that makes a lot more sense because I was thinking, right, this <laughs> is that this, pointless train. This, this island, <laughs> yeah, this island can only hold thirty <laughs> sheep. Uh, why How got a train lazy on it? do you have to be to take that train? <laughs> I mean, and plus the fact it's steam engine. It's steam, there's no electricity, so by the time you fucking stoked up the furnace, you'd be like, "Oh fuck, I've got to get off now." The coals would just be getting hot, and you'd be like, "Oh my god, we're gonna have to go." Unless they did it like in a loop around, and they just getting sat there for a few hours, just going round and round the island. Like, There's got something to do. I mean, it probably gets boring, you know. Kills the time, doesn't it? Really? Uh, exactly. So. There was considerable damage over on the east side of the island. I mean, now, upon returning to the living quarters, more then found the logbooks that the lighthouse keepers were, were, were keeping, which was part of their job. They take uh, weather recordings, barometer measurements, etc. They weren't just there flicking the switch and making sure... <laughs> Boats weren't crashing. They were. Is this thing still on? Yeah. <laughs> they were just... I can't tell. This big fuck off light above my head. Is it on or is it off? Oh, Best no. go and check. Yeah, have a look. Oh, my eyes. Oh, fuck, it's on. Oh, bloody <laughs> hell. Uh, so, apparently, in these log books, there are some. Uh, are from December the 12th to December the 15th. This is the. There are some strange logs kept, let's say. So on December the 12th, uh, the log states, Gale north by northwest, sea lashed to fury, never seen such a storm, waves very high, tearing at lighthouse, everything ship shape. Now, from the past couple of sentences, everything doesn't sound ship shape, but apparently, <laughs> everything ship shape. Uh, it's very contradictory. <laughs> yeah, and then the next line is, James Ducker, irritable. <laughs> Probably because he's stuck with this idiot. Yeah. Can't decide whether things are friggin' horrendous or ship yeah. shape. No, 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 no wonders. He's probably just read your fucking log entry and gone, <laughs> that's nonsense. <laughs> uh, uh, and then later on in the day, the, the, the entry was, storm still raging, wind steady, storm bound, cannot go out, ship passing, sounding foghorn. Could see lights of cabins. Duke at quiet. Donald MacArthur crying. <laughs> MacArthur's just like, I can't fucking take this anymore. I it's can't. It's my first day. I'm only a trainee. They didn't even cover this in my schooling. I don't even know what to do right now. One of them's irritable. One of them's <laughs> quiet. I just. One of them makes I, no I, sense. I, I don't know what to say. I can't, I can't win here. He's just sitting crying in a corner. <laughs> Rocking guy. back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, There's only one fucking chair in the whole building. <laughs> and and someone's not that over. <laughs> sitting on the floor. Got piles now. <laughs> Can't even go out for a walk. It's lashing it down. <laughs> but everything's ship shape, so we're all right. Could get the train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just got to sit on the train for a bit. <laughs> Getting away from you two. I'm going down on the train. <laughs> My train of serenity. <laughs> Go round in little circles. <laughs> my special, my happy place. That. Oh god, <laughs> this poor guy. <laughs> so on uh, December thirteenth, uh, the log read: "Storm continued through night. Wind shifted west by north. Ducat quiet. MacArthur now praying." Uh, later on, it was noon, grey daylight. Me, Ducat, and MacArthur prayed. So they're all having a good pray. Uh, well, because of a storm? Uh, apparently so, and these are seasoned lighthouse men. This isn't, they're, they're not fresh out of the academy. Uh, well, everything was ship shape. Yeah, everything was ship shape <laughs> yesterday, but apparently so, all gone to gone shit. Away? All gone downhill. Uh, all right, okay. On December the 14th, they just couldn't be bothered, there was no entry. Just fuck it. Can't be asked writing today. Not, not even going to do my job. They all felt like being quiet. Exactly. They've got one job to do and none of them did it on the 14th. Hmm. Uh, 
And the final entry was made on a slate. Just can't even be bothered. Like, not even using pens and paper now. Just slate and chalk. Uh, I mean, it would have been... Under normal circumstances, it probably would have been transferred onto the logbook, but they never got around to that. And uh, December the 15th, 1pm, storm ended, sea calm, God is over all. God, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah. Uh, so there was a big storm, but everything was ship shape, then the storm passed, and now everything's fine, and it's all good. Yeah, and God is God is over everything. God is God's there with him. Right. Uh, but as much as much as I'd, I'd love to believe that they were they were true, uh, apparently it's claimed that uh, that they were made up further on further down the line by an American pulp fiction magazine just to give a little bit of spice to the story because to be honest with you the log as well it's like it's not a journal it's not a diary it's it's an official workbook kind of thing so you wouldn't like you you wouldn't say like when he says james duca irritable you wouldn't go oh my boss is a prick and write it down in in the diary. You know what I mean? I'll do it in a Zoom call. Do you know you <laughs> just wouldn't do it. Uh, Can you imagine them in a Zoom call, like literally the lighthouse is like shaking and all the furniture and stuffs like flying across the room, and he's on a Zoom call, and his wife's like, "Is everything okay? Yeah, I'm fine. It's absolutely ship shape. Ship shape over here, love. Yeah. <laughs> Stop crying, Donald. Ship shape, love." <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I mean, as fanciful as it is, and as 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 uh, as much as it adds to the kind of the the vagueness of it all, it's it's absolute boulder dash and made up. Uh, yeah. So the on the fifteenth of December, the actual light was out on the lighthouse. So. A, a steamer, the Arctor, had passed a lighthouse on the 15th of December at midnight and it did report that the the lighthouse light wasn't on. But for some reason, the, the message was never passed on to the Northern Lighthouse Board or they never acted on it, either one, which is a little bit odd because mm. lighthouses are quite important. Yeah, and the lighthouse board literally has one job, and that's to check on the lighthouses. That's the thing as well. The, <laughs> the clue is in their name, and they went, ah, yeah. uh, no. Just someone else. Someone else. Th- Why can't the railway people do this? I was this? about to say the railway board like them lazy bastards. <laughs> They've got a train over there. They can just go and have a look at their train while they're doing repairs and just give us a shout. Ah. <laughs> oh. Uh, and as well, uh, there was a gentleman called Mr. Roderick McKenzie, who was a gamekeeper, and he was actually paid to observe the lighthouse. So, as there was no radio communication between the Flannans and Lewis at that time, uh, Mr. McKenzie, the gamekeeper, was appointed as an observer to the light, for which he received a payment of £8 a year. Now, his duties involved watching for any signals from the lighthouse 80 miles northwest of his vantage point. And so his job was just looking out a window, basically. Basically, at night, just to go and open his curtains, have a look, see if anything's untoward. Uh, and in the event of such a failure, he was required immediately to report it to head office in Edinburgh so uh, necessary steps could be taken and any repairs could be uh, carried out as soon as possible. Now, after the fact uh, of all this happened because the light went out on the 15th, he did say when he was questioned, yeah, I didn't see it come on between the 15th and the 26th, but I thought that was normal. That was 11 whole days? Yeah, one job. Well... He had one job, and he went, it's not on. It's a bit weird, that, isn't it? 
I had the hangover from hell. I didn't open my curtains for like nearly two weeks, honestly. Still getting over it now. Yeah, may, may, maybe it'll come on tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> just, I'll just give it, I'll just give it, you know what? I'll just give it 12 days. 12 days seems I... the right amount of days to get it. And then at 11, he went, oh, it's come on now. Oh, see, I knew it. And 12's a magic number. I don't think he's really earning this eight quid a year. Exactly. I would do this for eight quid a year. Seven fifty more than he deserves. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it was his one job, and he just went. Someone else will do it, which seems to be the theme over here with a lot of these people: uh, Northern Light, Houseboard, and uh, the game people. Like someone else will do this. Railway, where's the railway services? Why well, can't they do anything? <laughs> uh, so it officially. Uh, the disappearance was reported by Robert Muirhead, who was superintendent of the the lighthouse people, I assume. Uh, officially, in his official report, he speculated that the three had been washed away by a big wave after trying to secure the supply box. The thinking behind that is... Because of the damage done to the East Landing and the supply box, two of them went out to try and fix it and maybe something happened to one of them and they were swept away and then they went back to get the other guy, uh, MacArthur, who was who was in the living quarters and because he didn't take his, his coat with him, he kind of must have just run out of the building maybe that's why the the chair was f- pushed over he wasn't with his oil skin and run down and then another wave got them too but i mean the hardy lighthouse people surely i mean i know it's the 1900s but surely lighthouses have been manned before this for centuries uh so surely there's some kind of protocol if someone gets washed overboard do you, do you know so i don't i suppose it depends if they really gave a shit about each other or not because if they didn't it's like well protocol says you know one of us still has to be alive so let's one of us stay in here but if they were all like friends then maybe they were like we have to save him and like run out you know yeah it was like a, like a spur of the moment kind of deal yeah no no that that's it as well and i mean these these three the four of them uh with more as well because obviously they'd been there since the beginning since this lighthouse had been built which was just like a year previously so they've been together and they're spending long times of a uh, long time together within each other's company so they they do kind of they they know each other obviously and uh the Robert Muirhead, in his uh, official report, he actually wrote that uh, I was with the keepers for one of the months during the summer of 1899 when everyone worked hard to secure the early lighting of the station before winter and working along with them, I appreciated the manner in which they performed their work. I visited Flannan Islands when the relief was made so lately as the 7th of December and have the melancholy recollection that I was the last person to shake hands with them and bid them adieu. So he does paint a picture that there wasn't any anything untoward. These guys got on, they, they worked together. Uh, so, yeah, maybe it was kind of shit. Donald's fell in, quick, run, save him, try and help. And then all protocol goes out the window because it's your friend that's there. Why did they have the supply crate outside? It was 100 yards up, so it was 100 feet in the air. So it was basically, it was there as a... uh, If anyone was coming into land in the East Landing... uh, then they had ropes that they could get to, but in theory, the, a wave couldn't wash it away because it was that high up. Uh, well, yeah, but why not just have it inside? That would stop a wave washing it away. Right, this may surprise you, but I'm not that au fait with lighthouse men and their job and what they do because obviously I'm not a hardy seaman. 
mm, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, I'm sure someone who listens to this will be giving us comments about what lighthouse people do and don't do because sailors and sea people and you know all that <laughs> boats and ships. Uh, yeah, cat. Can you please put Ant right and uh, any fourteen-year-olds uh, out there listening? You can just chuckle with me at a hardy seaman. <laughs> Sorry, I'll grow up now. <laughs> it was funnier when you said it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, uh, I assume it was because if they needed it in an emergency when someone was coming into land, then it was there. But I don't know. But it was 100 feet in the air, uh, above sea level, not in the air, not just floating in the air. It was 100 feet Oops. above sea level, probably up 160 fucking steep stairs. Uh <laughs> Both sides, uh, and and that was destroyed. So how did that get destroyed? Mm. I mean, if it's a big wave, though, it crushed a railing, it wrecked the railway track. God knows what happened to the train. Probably washed out to sea. Oh God! Yeah. And uh, <laughs> poor conductor. <laughs> and it, um, and it smashed a concrete. It moved a concrete rock. Yeah, that weighed weighed a ton. So, yeah, I think. <sighs> There is, there is there is some speculation as well about uh, one of the speculations I did hear is that there may have been some kind of uh, melange et toi going on upon the island and maybe one of them got jealous and uh, <laughs> that is the fisticuffs Involved, I'm a tinfoil hatter, and that is the most outlandish theory, I think. That that didn't even enter my head. I yeah. literally thought you were going to say sea monster. Mm. Well, yeah. I mean, as we all know, as we all know, Kelpies are very famous Scottish sea monster creatures. Uh, and with the island being... Having so much reverence in regards to the magic grass and the, the twin sheeps and stuff... It was conceived by the people in the area, uh, like in the Outer Hebrides, that some supernatural event had occurred. Uh, obviously, well before the the like the homosexual thing, like they they would never have thought that. And if you've seen pictures of these lighthouse men, they have got very strong moustaches. Uh, <laughs> you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think of them as like they're not like. They're not Freddie Mercury moustaches, let's put it that way. I was just about to say, Freddie say. Mercury had a strong moustache. <laughs> yeah, but it was, oh no, it was like, it was more, a more a bushy, a praro moustache. Like, not I a... Mean, it's fashion, isn't it? It's, a, it's fashion to have that, whether you're gay or not. It was a fashion back then. Yeah. I just, that is the last thing that would enter my head, is that these three men were embroiled in some kind of romantic relationship. Yeah, there's like, no actual there's no actual evidence for it. No. It's just it's just people on the internet going, yeah, I bet they I bet they were bummer they, boys, and uh, they were just they were just fighting and pushed each other into the sea. He's yeah. mine. You can't have him. No, I saw him first. You bitch, and yeah. then just push each other into the ocean. Yeah, no, I feel like a kraken is more likely. Yeah, uh, uh, I mean, the the thing is, is that the lighthouse was automated in 1970 so 1970 there's not been people living on the island but in the previous 70 years up until it was automated a storm of the magnitude that you'd kind of have to see for the amount of damage that it did hasn't been reported since so it's like I mean hmm. one off isn't it yeah, yeah, I suppose that that, that, that that film with George Clooney, The Perfect Storm, isn't it? It's uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it happens. Yes, yeah, it has done. It has done, hasn't it? <laughs> See, it was it was recorded as well by Hollywood of all people. <laughs> Imagine it happening to George Clooney. How how lucky is that? Uh, how unlucky is that? <laughs> well, well, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, God, God, there would have been an uproar. Would have lost him. <laughs> so, what do you think happened? I think it was a storm. Uh, uh, <laughs> lovers, uh, I, I, I don't know, to be honest with you, because it's maybe, maybe they just got. I mean, if you if you were to believe the logs, if the logs were written 
that way and you were to believe him and there's you know there's uh, it, it wasn't embellished and made up then you could kind of think oh yeah maybe maybe they've they've had a mental break it's been like they've had a bad storm for a few days and then they've all got a little bit crazy and they've gone you know what God is above us we'll just walk into the sea kind of thing but they're, they're used to it they've been doing this for a year now they've been there for a, not there directly for a year but they've been this is their job this is what they do day in day out so I think they would have been a lot used to it I think like you said if they they were that good of friends I think protocol just kind of went out the window with them mm-hmm. and there was something happening they tried to see I don't know why they'd go out during a storm and try and salvage the storage box well say if the storage box held like their food or like maybe rum if that was where their rum supply was I'd be fucking out the door yeah, I suppose. save yeah, yeah. the rum <laughs> yeah indeed yeah I suppose yeah it's a good point it depends, it depends what that did hold to be honest with you I mean there was t- it it just says, uh, what do we say? I mean, you would assume it has to be like their food or something, like spare food, like salt beef or whatever yeah. keeps it okay outside. In a box with a moral. Yeah. Clean pants. I don't. Pants. <laughs> yeah. Clean. I mean, clean pants are very important when you're getting wet all the time. I know you're a guy and you don't understand anything about clean pants, but clean pants are very important. They are indeed. They are indeed. Well, you can turn them inside out, I suppose. Uh, oh, God. He's such a guy. But, yeah, there's... Uh, so, th- there was a lot of damage on the on the east landing. So, it must have, it must have just been a rogue wave. Well, just yeah. One that came up on them that they, uh, they, they really didn't notice uh like so several rogue waves so one starts smashing the storage the supply crate up smashes the railings moves big boulders and they're like shit that's that's our food like we're stuck here and we've got no way of like getting back across to the island for more supplies i mean we're on an island we could fish i guess but regardless we need to save the supply crate and then they go out and then another wave comes in and sweeps them out to sea yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we've all like been in the sea, haven't we? Where you're jumping over the waves, and then you get that one that just smashes you on your back, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, there's always, always one, isn't there? Uh, <laughs> there's always one. Always mm-hmm. one. Uh, <laughs> I mean, to, to be honest, if you do want to hear more about this, there is actually an opera based on uh, based on this. I don't. Um, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Can you link uh, me? Uh, yeah, I'll have probably I'll probably put the <laughs> link, link link down below. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's 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 interesting. Uh, <laughs> I'm uh, really intrigued now. I'll give you that. Uh, and there is an upcoming musical as well. Oh, you're kidding uh, me! Come th- on. That's going to be uh, based on the events of the Flannan Isles. Uh, Give me a break. Is that just going to be like three guys, like one of them sitting quiet because that's what he does. He's quiet. And then the other two, one of them going, there's a storm, there's a storm. And the other one going, no, it's ship shape. Is that because it sounds like the worst musical ever? Well, I don't know. I've, the, the, I've not looked. I've, they're on Twitter, these uh, these musical people. Uh, but the opera... <laughs> The opera actually does start off with uh, three sailor guys, uh, three sailors, that's probably the right word, uh, <laughs> singing about what happened <laughs> in, 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 in falsetto or whatever it is, <laughs> opera oh. language. And, Christ uh, on a crutch. <laughs> it, it, it's, uh, it's, it's quite, the, the premise is that these are, these are three, three people who have been to Flannan Isles and seen, seen what has happened. And then they're questioned by the, uh, the Royal Light, not Northern Lighthouse Board, I assume. And they, they start to, their story starts to unravel. Uh, but I only watched the first, like, 40 seconds and, uh, <laughs> 
didn't didn't really get much from it. I'll be honest with you. But, oh well, uh, that's okay because I'll buy you. I'll buy. I'll buy us a couple of tickets for Christmas, and we'll go. We'll go to the to the West End, and we'll go, and I'll, we can sit through the whole thing. I'll bring you some binoculars and everything. Well, you laugh. I'm going to the theatre in uh, December. What? So, uh, what are you going to see? Book of Mormon. Really? Yeah. Good call. Again. Again. Uh, Again. <laughs> Right, yeah. okay. Okay. It's coming back. It's coming back. So me and my nephew are going to go because uh, it's quite funny. Oh, nice. Uh, well, I think you also should book tickets for the Flannan Niles fal- falsetto. Oh, yeah. Shit. I might actually be going to the Meatloaf one as well. Oh, don't. There's a, oh. a Meatloaf musical. Bat out of hell, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Meat, meatloaf, right? This is just going to tangent. But Meatloaf is just musical opera. Is just every song... Is just a story. It sounds horrible. It's just... Whoa! <laughs> now, let's, like, just think before we speak, <laughs> I did. okay? It sounds horrible. Wow. <laughs> Look, right. Meat will be spinning in his grave if he were dead, but he's not, thank God. So, uh... <laughs> Well, actually, I, I hope he's had very little to do with the musical and he curses the fact that it, it, of its very existence every single night of his life. He has very little to do with uh, any of the music. He just sings it. Uh, he's got a, uh, a guy... I, just, I know far too much about this, but he's got a uh, guy called Paul Storman or something who uh, who writes all his, uh, his his music and he just he just turns up and belts them out. <sighs> For eight minutes. <laughs> if if somebody said to me, I've bought you meatloaf tickets, I would say, I hate you. And if somebody said to me, I've bought you <laughs> meatloaf the musical tickets, I'd be like, I'll end you. Wow. I'm actually going to end you and then myself. I could not sit through that. <laughs> I mean, some people have got no class, I suppose. <laughs> the way it yeah. is. Yeah, for Nature all the classy nurture. people out there, get yourself yeah. to meatloaf the musical. <laughs> Exactly. You don't know what you're missing. Clearly. Yeah, on uh, on that bombshell, <laughs> I think. Uh, yeah. That Solved, been... there was a storm. Yeah, yeah, another one debunked. Fuck uh, off Netflix. Exactly, and musical. Don't even be stealing that ending. Uh, <laughs> fucking having Meatlow singing Bat Out of Hell on an island in front of a lighthouse. <laughs> with Just... the... With the free lighthouse men, like, in <laughs> congering in the background and kissing because no, they're no, all gay they, now. No, they're, they're in the background with guitars, like in Robert Palmer's video, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the girls that can't keep in sync with the guitars. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, God. They're all like that while Meatloaf's singing, yeah. Yeah. See, we've got an ending for you, right? <laughs> if you if, Trademark that, right? That's ours. You can have it for a quid 50, tell you. Uh, but yeah, yep. yeah, whole, yeah, 150 <laughs> new pennies, uh, bargain. Uh, yeah, on that bombshell, this has been the <laughs> MO Podcast with me, Conservation San. And me, Atreya. Thank you all so much for joining us, and uh, we shall see you next time. Bye. Bye. The MO Podcast. The MO Podcast. The MO Podcast. The MO Podcast.